Hey there, it's Susan Pierce Thompson and welcome to the weekly vlog. So not long ago, I was on a Facebook Live and uh, I got asked a question that I instantly knew that I wanted to shoot a vlog on. It was by Dawn Zacco and she uh, graciously gave me permission to use her name and her question was this. Susan, do you have any idea why some people start doing bright line eating and are able to stick to it flawlessly and other people struggle and struggle and can barely string a few bright days together? Uh, what's the deal with that, especially in the weight loss phase? And I said, yeah, <laughs> yeah, I do have some idea about why that happens. And I thought I'm going to shoot a vlog on that. So basically what I told her is there are four uh, main things in the mix here. Three of them are in play from day one. And one of them speaks more to long-term success. Like after you've been going for a while, it separates um, people out later on in the game. But initially there's three things. So one of them um, is that uh, people's lives are really different, right? Some people's lives are uh, relatively spacious and they have the privilege of having sort of um, resources of all kinds, time, financial resources. They can get support if they need support. Um, their lives are relatively um you know, sort of balanced or, you know, like they have room to fit something big like bright line eating into their lives. Other people are in a very different situation um, with, for example, uh, you know, uh, parenting with no partner, a bunch of kids and um, working a couple of jobs and um, caring for an elderly parent who is, uh, really sick, has dementia, uh, lots of upsetting, challenging things happen, different schedules, working night shifts, um, traveling a bunch, all of these sorts of life, getting lifey sort of things really impact a bright line eating journey, especially at the beginning when you're trying to set up habits and set up routines. At the extremes, um, you know, the sort of uh, regular, spacious, breathable life um, affords a lot of space to really focus on bright line eating. And at the other extreme, it's really, really hard to get started and to make this thing work. Um, so that's one big variable that I see in the mix. Um, and there's all kinds of things that would go into that bucket, supportive partners versus not, um, you know, on and on and on, right? So another thing that I see being a factor is um, some people come in with parts of themselves that are really not on board with this um, for any number of reasons. It could be sort of a rebel part that comes from having had a really domineering parent as a child and um, sort of the person wants to do this, but a part of them is just, is just like, uh, no way, this is too restrictive. I'm not gonna do this or maybe um, trauma or emotional wounds on board that, um, you know, maybe they have a part of them that is afraid of taking off weight because um, they were sexually abused in the past. And the idea of being sexually attractive again is really, really scary. Um, now this isn't um, insurmountable by any stretch. Um, all of these issues really can be um, overcome. It's just that they shift the landscape for sure, right? And so some people are coming in with more um, internal resistance of various kinds to doing bright line eating, which brings me to the third thing. And I, I could have mentioned it first, but I wanted to mention it last because it really is, um, it's the trump card. It's the, it's the one card that, that matters the most and it is degree of willingness and surrender. Um, and it, it takes precedence over everything. So no matter the obstacles, the inner resistance, the um, crazy intense life, if someone is just deeply done with the food and so on board with doing this, like just if if they if their will and their their um uh just their insides are just doing this, they are surrendered. They are going to follow this plan no matter what. They're just going to do what it says. That's what actually matters most. 
And um, not everybody comes in with that at all. Some people get there later in their journey. They do more research in bright line eating and they get to a point where they're more done. It's way easier to arrive here in that state, um, but it's totally doable to get there later as well. Um, yeah, deep, deep, deep surrender and convicted willingness is by far the number one factor that predicts success, in my opinion. Um, that said, it doesn't always look like that at first. There can be deep doubts on board and, um, you know, the really sort of um, battle weary dieter who arrives at the doorstep of Brightline Eating, more than half of the people who arrive at Brightline Eating have already tried more than 16 other plans, programs, diets, approaches in their past, more than 16. And um, for that kind of person, it makes sense to arrive with some deep skepticism, right? With some parts that are like thinking, I'm not sure this is gonna work. A part of me is like, you know, yeah, why would I, why would I assume at this point that this is gonna work, right? Why would you? Um, which is fair. And so I just want to say the deep surrender doesn't always show itself at first, right? It, it often um, looks at first like skepticism, maybe even tiredness, uh, because uh, coming out of the food can be exhausting. It can be like a battle that you've lost. And so you might arrive bloody and budget, bludgeoned. Um, it can look a lot of different ways. But once someone has marched down the path a bit and amassed some bright line days, then the distinguishing factor after that is whether their rise in confidence crosses over the line into cockiness and they forget to be respectful of the power of the food. And the reality that if you stop doing what is working, you're not gonna keep getting the results you've been getting. It's only working because you're doing it. And if you start playing around, you enter a whole new landscape. So the people who never get cocky and who always remember that no matter how far down the road they are, they're always still two feet from the ditch. They're always eligible to fall into the mire and misery of breaking and breaking and breaking and resuming and breaking and resuming and breaking and resuming. The people that remember that are able to amass years of unbroken bright lines, years and then decades of unbroken bright lines without succumbing back to old ways, going back to the food, right? Um, and that is, um, I think, mostly a factor of surrounding yourself with other people who also will uh, reinforce the reality of, first of all, you watch other people go back into the food and you're like, right, I don't want that. Right, it's harder that way. Right, you lose your freedom. Right, those exceptions, they don't work, right? Um, and surrounding yourself with people who are staying bright um, reinforces that identity. So that's what I see. That's what I see. Those are the biggest differences in people coming into bright line eating and, um, you know, why some people just just pick this up and run with it and um, and others really flounder. Um, ultimately, I think it comes down to at any given moment, you know, 51% of you has got to want this um, more than it doesn't, right? Um, and you just start stringing one bright meal on top of another. And before you know it, that daisy chain gets pretty long. So uh, thank you, Don, for the amazing question. That's the weekly vlog. I'll see you next week.